lines design a layout for the car park with the dimensions provided in the diagram. The dimensions of a car is provided for perpendicular parking. In your answer, you should identify the relevant factors you want to consider in your design. Justify with calculations that your design is making the best use of the available width of the car park. Justify the degree of accuracy of your design. Illustrate the design on one of the diagrams below. Okay, so they actually provide a few options that they want us to choose from. Option one, let's see, read this. This is option two. Option three. And option four, as well as option five. Okay, what we should be doing when we receive this type of question at first is we just start by order with what they actually want from our answer. Okay, starting off with identify the relevant factors you considered in your design. By this, they want you to identify any mathematical elements that are already provided in the question. They don't want you to calculate anything. They don't want you to find anything. They just want you to list out any mathematical values that are already provided in the question. They don't need everything. They just want you to provide a few to allow you to score the marks for that portion of the answer. So let's take a look at the first one of the few values that they give us. We can see that. They've actually given us the vehicle dimensions over here. They've given us the length of the car, 4.5. The width of the car is 1.8, not including um, these parts. So that's one value that we can include. We can start with vehicle dimensions, which we know are 4.5 meters times 1.8 meters. And as we just saw, we already know the length of the yellow space, which is basically this yellow space. We already know the length from the information provided to us. Length of yellow space. This is something that we have to calculate a bit. We see that they provide the entire length over here as 2.5 and the car width as 1.8. So 2.5 minus 1.8, you will be getting the length of the yellow space, which would be 0 Zero point seven meters. Another piece of information is the minimum lane lane width, which are the conditions that the question provides for us. And the minimum lane width is actually different depending on the type of parking. If it's perpendicular parking, they want this to be five point five meters. If it's angle parking, they want this to be four meters. And there's another piece of information that we can just generally see from the options given to us. We can see the dimensions of the entire layout of the car park area. That's something else that we could include, dimensions of the layout. To be 28 meters times 13 meters. And the area of the layout is one more piece of information could possibly include, which is what we could calculate using the dimensions. Normally, you don't have all the values you include for this part of the question don't have to be calculated, but just for the sake of the question, you could also 
add this piece of information if you'd like. In the calculation, we get 364 meters squared. Now this answers the first part of the question, which asks identify the relevant factors you consider in your design. Now moving on, justify with calculations that your design is making the best use of the available width of the car park. So for this, what we can do, we were given options. We can look at each option and see whether they fulfill the conditions that is set up for this car park. And if they do fulfill the conditions, how many cars can be fit within that car park? And when we narrow down the options, we can choose the best option depending on how many cars can be fit within that car park. That's what they mean when they say making the best use of the available width. Which car park is able to fit the most number of cars while also fulfilling the conditions as given? So let's look at each car park one at a time. Starting off, let's start with option five. If we were to look at option five, Okay, we can just tell just from looking at it, option five is automatically not viable as there's no space at all for minimum lane width, lane width, which is necessary to safely turn and park any vehicle. So option five is Okay, that's option five. Let's take a look at option four. If we were to look at option four. Okay, when we look at option four, we can see uh, in comparison to option five, this is angled parking, not perpendicular parking. And first, what we should do, we should see is that whether it fulfill the minimum lane width or not, because we get from option five could be obviously be seen, but option four, we're not too sure. So for angle parking, uh, cars have to fulfill a minimum lane width of four meters. So if we just calculate the length over here, we can actually see it's 5.5 meters. That means it's more than enough. It has a lane width of five, around 5.5 meters, which makes it a possible option. A possible option due to the four meters being the minimum lane width for angle parking. So option four is definitely a possible option. So we'll have to calculate the number of cars that fit within here. So we see there are four sets of four cars. So you can easily calculate the number of cars that can fit then to be 16. So let's just type that down. If we were to look at option four. So if you may recall, the question said to include calculations, and these are the calculations we mean. The types of calculations obviously depend on the type of question that, it, that, that appears. Different calculations are required for different questions. And if you can see that I'm typing down everything that I'm saying, because for criteria D, communication is very important. You have to be able to communicate your ideas. Just having the working itself is not important. Being able to express why this works, why this doesn't work is very important when it comes to criterion D because it also includes criterion C. Criterion C is also tested, which stands for communicating. So this option manages to fit a total of 